So if you're pricing loads for your shippers and those prices are not working, you're going back to your shipper and every time you go back with a price, they come back and tell you, hey, that's not gonna work. We've already been covered by another provider. That's a good thing. I wanna applaud you. And the reason why I wanna give you some applause for that is because you're doing the right thing. You're going through the process. That's what you have to do as a freight broker. You have to go through the process and figure out what will work for you and your shipper. But many of you think the process is going into your low board, going into rate mate, whatever tool you have to find rates, go in and put a point of origin, point of destination, and then when it comes up and shows you what the rate is, you'll go in and say, hey, I'm gonna dial in on what the paid shipper rates are. And once you get that paid shipper rate, you'll add your 18 or your 15% commission to it, and then you'll give that number to the shipper. And you're just absolutely dumbfounded when that number doesn't work. But what you're not taking into consideration is those are just averages. Those are the paid rate averages, which means some of the numbers will be higher than the rate that you gave and some will be lower than that number. So we're dealing with average numbers when you go into that low board and average numbers don't always work for our shippers. So how do we get numbers that work? Well, you've started off in the right place with your low board. You've started the process. You just haven't completed it. What I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to help you complete the process. I'm going to take you in and show you how I dial in on a rate that's going to work for me, the shipper, and the carrier. So come on inside and let's jump into the business. So I wanted to give you a visual of what I was talking about when I said paid shipper rates. I have a point of origin of Marshville, North Carolina, destination Green Bay, Wisconsin, and we're going to use reefer. As the equipment type, I'll go in and take a look at it and show you what I'm talking about here. Now, as you see, it comes up and it shows us Marshville to Green Bay, Wisconsin. And then it gives us a rate index, rate trending. We're going to go into posted rate averages here. As you can see, this is the posted rates where freight brokers, people come here and post the load here for X amount of dollars. So you can see here over the last seven days, number of reports, 236. The average total rate is $23.75. Average rate to the shipper is $3 per mile. Average rate to the truck here is $2.46 per mile. But these are posted rate averages. Now we're going to go down to what's actually paid, the paid rate averages. This is the number that I say people come in and they say, oh, okay, I'm going to get this number and I'm gonna add my 18% to it, at 18% here, your desired gross margin, and then you'll give your shipper this price, $3.82 per mile. This is already calculated in with this 18%, and we'll just go off of that number. Well, that number is not always gonna be wrong. It's not always not gonna work. Sometimes it will work, but a lot of times it won't. So we have to go through some additional steps to get numbers that work. And what I just noticed here is it shares paid shipper rates and it's not showing us any information on that. Not sure why that is. Um, but even with that being the case, how would start out with this load? If I was trying to get a price to take back to my shipper, the first thing that I would do is take a look at the average rate to truck under posted rate averages. And I noticed that to be $2.43 a mile. And we're talking about a thousand miles. So I'm looking at about $2,400 to the truck over the last seven days, the average rate that's being posted. Then I'll go down and look at the paid rate averages over the last 30 days. I have 23 reports here, and I notice that the paid rate average to the truck is $3.13 per mile. On 1,000 miles, that's approximately $3,100. So I have a $3,100 rate as a paid rate average, and I have a $2,500 rate as a posted rate. Now what I want to do is take a look at that number between $2,500 and $3,100, and I want to start talking to my network, talking to my trucking network about this load and what they think about these numbers. Now, I'm not going to give them a range of $25 to $31. I'm going to pick a number in that range. And I will probably start off with $28 to $2,900 in this lane to find out what type of feedback do I get from my network on this load. If you don't have a network already, you would go out and post this load. What I see new freight brokers make a mistake at sometimes is when they post a load, they'll post a load and they don't put any information on it because they haven't gone in and start drilling down on the price themselves. 
They're trying to wait and hope that truckers are going to solve that problem for them. Sometimes that works. A lot of times it doesn't because the trucker is not taking you seriously and he gives you just any price that he comes off the top of his head with. So I think it's a good idea to go in and drill down on your rate and actually post rates sometimes. Post the load with a rate so the carrier can take a look at that. And if you start getting feedback on that, people start calling you on it, you may be in the right place as far as your rate is concerned. And then it'll, it's about going in and getting what the total rate is at that point. So if you've gone out and you've posted it and you've posted it at twenty eight to twenty nine hundred dollars and you're getting feedback on it, that would mean that may be a good price for you to start at with your carrier. And then, of course, you'll come back and add a commission to that price if you settle upon that price and then you'll give a total rate. So here's something that I want you to pay attention to. If you notice here on the posted rate averages, it says average rates include the fuel surcharge. Same thing here. Average rates include fuel surcharge for the paid rate averages. So when we're posting that number out there, $2,500, $3,000, $3,100, $2,800, whatever number we're posting, we're posting that number with fuel surcharge. So if you have a ask, driver ask you about fuel surcharge, then it's already included in that rate because you're giving a total rate. 99 times out of 100, carriers are not going to ask that question. Carriers are concerned about a total rate. So when you give the number, you're giving a total rate, line haul plus fuel surcharge. So we were working with the number $2,800. So if I took $2,800 to my low board, to my network, and I got good feedback on that number, I was confident we could sell at $2,800, then I would take that number plus my commission to my shipper. In this case, at $2,800, I would draw a commission in that of about 15%. So that would be $3,275 that I would go back to my shipper at, and it would leave me making about $400, $475 on that load. Now, a lot of things can happen. I might have to give more to the carrier to get that load moved, but you know we, gotta, we have a good chance of making a decent profit in this load at those numbers if everything works out. So as you can see, this is not really hard at all. It's about figuring out what will work. You don't know what will work right now, so you have to go somewhere where people hang out at, talk about loads, talk about the price you have for those loads. And then you find out if it'll work or not. It's not we like we know right off the top of our heads that it's gonna work or it's not gonna work unless you have history in that lane. People say this is hard and they say it's hard because they're not comfortable with it. But of course, the more comfortable you get with this, the easier it becomes. You see that this is not really hard at all. It's about going in and taking a look at data and then making a decision based on that data. Another thing that people like to do is say, hey, you know, I'm not going to get started. I'm not going to go out and start giving any information to my shippers just yet. I want to make sure everything is perfect. Well, really, not really. You know that you can't be perfect, but that is just a disguise for your own insecurity. See, you have an insecurity right now. You don't have the confidence yet to go out and get pricing and give it back to shippers without feeling a certain way about that. Once you get the confidence, once you feel better about you and what it is that you're doing, you would throw this idea of perfection out of the way because you know it's just a word that we use when we don't want to do something. So in order to get a price that works for you, your shipper, and your carrier, you got to first start taking that number out there and talking to your shipper, talking to your carrier to find out what number will work. And let's just say the worst case scenario happened. Let's say you gave a number back to the shipper that was too low. Then guess what happens then? You just have to have the money to pay for the difference so you can still get the load moved. And then if you don't want to move the load, you can give the load back to the shipper and say, hey, unfortunately, we couldn't find a truck. Now, I wouldn't want that to take that option. I would want to take the option of, hey, I'll absorb the loss and pay to get the load moved because I want to continue to move loads with that shipper. I want them to know that we're competent. We can do what we say we can do. But the bottom line is, it's not the end of the world, even if the worst case scenario happens. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you want to learn more about the freight broker business, I'll leave a free link in the description. It's my five video series titled How the Load Movement Process Works. What it allows for you to do is to come in my office with me, watch over my shoulders, I move loads, talk to shippers, talk to carriers. That way you can get a better understanding of how the business works before you come into it. And then if you want to know more about how we go out and find the shippers that we're quoting those prices to, I'll leave a free link right here that shows you how we go out and find the shippers that we work with. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. See you at the top 
because the bottom is much too crowded.